Watch that. You're going, you're going max. You know that, right? They're going to classify you max. All right? And you're going to go there, and everyone's going to know. Baby killer. Good luck with that. Welcome to the Norman Nick Show. I am Norman. Now, today's video, I'm going to read the indictment of Latricia Green, um, who was the foster care mother of Charlie Gray, um, who was killed by her husband, uh, Daquan Green. Now, this was a wild story. I just got a hold of it this morning. Check it out. The spleen was ripped in half. You are. Not only are you you're a murderer, but you're a sociopath. That's what you are. Absolute sociopath. You're going to go up here and try to talk to me? Listen, you're not chit-chatting with the RPD in your, in your living room trying to bullshit. December 21st, 2022. On December 19th, 2022, Latricia Green, date of birth, October 1st, 1995, was arraigned on a superseding indictment charging five counts of perjury in the first degree, class D felonies, and two counts of endangering the welfare of a child, class A misdemeanor, in that county court by that county court judge, Matthew Simpaminski. At the arraignment, Green pleaded not guilty to all charges. Green's husband, Daquan Green, was convicted of murder in the second degree and manslaughter in the first degree for the murder of a four-year-old named Charlie, who was placed with Mr. and Mrs. Green as a foster child. Mr. Green was also convicted of two counts of endangering the welfare of a child for his abuse of Charlie's five-year-old brother between the date of their placement. September 25, 2020, and Charlie's death, December 2020. On December 6, 2022, that county court Judge Matthew Sipaninski sentenced Daquan Green to a term of 25 years of life incarceration on the murder conviction and other lesser sentences that by operation of law will be served concurrently to the 25 to life sentence. No one's here to tell you what a sweet boy he was. He was taken from his family because they didn't care for him. He was put in a home where people were supposed to care for him and he killed him. So who, who would he have? That's why there's no government tax. That's why there's no family here. But despite that sad fact, Charlie's short life did matter. Mr. Green's position is that indeed this is a tragedy, uh, it, but did not occur at his hands. Uh, so with that, Your Honor, while we respect the jury's verdict uh, and disagree with it, um, I ask the court to consider in a posting sentence uh, that my client's uh, perceived lack of comments uh, concerning his fate before Your Honor uh, is based upon my advice to him uh, and his eventual uh, appellate uh, remedies that he may, may pursue. Watch that. You're going, you're going max. You know that, right? They're going to classify you max. All right? And you're going to go there, and everyone's going to know. Baby killer. Good luck with that. Following Daquan Green's murder of Charlie, that county family court removed Mrs. Green's biological children from her custody upon a finding that their safety would be an immediate risk to, of harm if they were not removed from her care. Mrs. Green subsequently testified in various family court proceedings between the time of Charlie's death and the present date in an effort to regain custody of her children. The county grand jury has accused her of committing perjury in the first degree five times on August 31st of 2022. The first count alleges Mrs. Green testified falsely when she denied sending a text message to Daquan Green stating, quote, no more bruises, we need them to heal, unquote. 
The second count alleges Green t falsely testified that she did not send a text message to Daquan indicating that she observed Daquan Green's handprint on the face of one of her biological children. The third count alleges Mrs. Green falsely testified that her knowledge Daquan Green had never caused bruising to that child. The fourth count alleges Mrs. Green falsely testified that to her knowledge, Daquan Green had never caused bruising to Charlie. The fifth count alleges Mrs. Green falsely testified that to her knowledge, Daquan Green had never caused bruising to Charlie's brother, the five-year-old foster child. In the sixth and seventh count, that county grand jury alleges Mrs. Green engaged in a course of conduct likely to be injurious to the welfare of Charlie and his five-year-old brother who were placed with her as foster care parents between September 25th of 2020 and December 20th of 2020. The people's theory of the case is that Green and her husband both physically abused the boys and Green used the COVID pandemic and other excuses to prevent foster care service providers from discovering the child's physical injuries. Later, Green intentionally attempted to mislead that county family court judge about her knowledge and participation in the abuse to regain custody of her own children and avoid responsibility for her conduct. At the arraignment, Green was released upon her own recognizance as none of the offenses included in the indictment were eligible for bail to be set. Green continues to manage Ebenezer's Dream Daycare Center in Glenville, New York, where she provides drop-in daycare services and operates a preschool academy. The maximum sentence if Green is convicted of perjury is two and one-third years to seven years indictment indeterminate on each count hello 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 hi my name is latricia i am the owner of ebenezer dream care center and if you are viewing this video you are watching this from my channel a mom at ebenezer which just means a mom at the altar um, so I'm here just for introduction of who I am. Um, I've been getting a lot of inquiries, um, on my website, social media about who I am, how I'm doing, what I'm doing, why am I doing what I'm doing, what is it that I'm doing? So I'm just going to answer those questions. So if Green is convicted of endangering the welfare of a child counts, the maximum sentence for each would be 364 days local incarceration. The case was investigated by the Rotterdam Police Department, the County Child Protective Services, the New York State Police Computer Forensic Laboratory, and the County District Attorney Office investigators. The people are represented by Assistant District Attorney Michael Nobles. Green is represented by Attorney Danielle Norini. An indictment is just an accusatory instrument. Green is presumed innocent until such time as she may be proven guilty in the court of law. She's entitled to all the rights of any accused person, including the right to a jury trial to determine her guilt or innocence. 